Dear Father in the Lord, the generous attendant of Deeper Life Bible Church, Pastor Gabriel Kumuya. Praise the Lord. I miss your good, great, and no go. Hallelujah. We're here for the divine touch. I am here for the divine touch. The Lord is going to touch your life. It'll touch your spirit. It'll touch your soul. It will touch your body. Every sickness, every infirmity, every disease, every plague, when the Lord touches you tonight, everything will vanish away in Jesus' name. I welcome everyone everywhere. I love you. I appreciate the fact that you are there and that you are with all your concentration as we are here in the great city of Enugu. And we're coming to you and the divine touch of the Lord is coming to you everywhere all over the globe. The touch of God will turn your life around. I see the Lord coming your way. I see the Lord touching you. I see the Lord lifting the problem out of your life tonight in Jesus' name. Touch me, Lord. Touch me, Lord. Touch me, Lord. Father, we thank you that everyone that demands, everyone that asks, everyone that desires divine touch, supernatural touch, healing touch, miracle walking touch, mountain moving touch, you have done it already. And we pray by the time we finish the message and the ministration, Miracles over there. Yeah. Miracles over there. Yeah. Miracles on that side. Yeah. Miracles outside. Yeah. Miracles everywhere. We're connected in Jesus' name. Yeah. We give you the glory because we know it is done. In Jesus' name we pray. That's very good. Another Enugu Amen before you sit down. You are blessed already. Sit down for your divine touch. Tonight, I'm reading a story to you. Why am I reading the story to you? Because the word of God says, whatsoever things were written at four times, they're reaching for our learning. That is, the story I'm reading to you has been reaching in the Bible for you. And they're reaching for your learning. That you, that I, that we, through the comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. There is hope for you tonight. And that hope, you will not miss it in Jesus' name. It says, these things happened unto them. What I'm going to read to you, the woman that came and touched the Lord and the torch drew the virtue of Christ unto her, these things were written for our admonition, for our instruction, for our learning that we who are now living at the end of the age, at the end of time, will receive the same miracles that, is, that they received. And tonight, what everything we read is for you. Every promise we claim is for you. Every touch we have is for you. Every good thing you are going to hear tonight will be transferred into your life. 
into my life i can't hear my good people into your life in jesus name if you have your bible there you open to mark chapter 5 verse 25 if you don't have a bible don't worry i read it to you and a certain woman mark chapter 5 verse 25 and a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years think about that this way and a certain person a man a woman my friend over there a certain person which had an issue everybody has an issue for her an issue of blood for, for other people, issue of failure in life. And for other people, it's the issue of depression, issue of disease. It's an issue of a problem in the family. Everyone somewhere has an issue. And the issue tonight, God will bring solution. The issue of sin, God will bring solution. And the issue of weakness in potency in your life, God will bring solution. And the issue of failure in your life, it will turn your failure to success tonight in Jesus' name. Some people have an issue, an issue in the family. And that issue in the family, the Lord will clear it away tonight in Jesus' name. A certain woman, a certain person, that time, this time, had an issue for her, an issue of blood for 12 years. Look at verse 26. She had suffered many things of many physicians the physicians there were the people that she thought she could get help from maybe yours is not a physician yes she had suffered many things for many philosophers there are some people they go to philosophers they go to psychologists and they think the problem of their life, the issue of their life will be solved by the philosopher, by the psychiatrist, by the physicians. And then it says she suffered many things of many physicians, the people who said they were helpers. Many of us have gone to people that we think would help us and just like she did some people go to local healers other people go to hypnotists other people go to herbalists other people go to traditionalists wherever you have gone and you have not got the solution the solution is here for you tonight the power of God will touch you tonight in Jesus name she had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and she was nothing better but rather grew worse rather grow worse and then in verse 27 and when she had heard of Jesus she heard what she heard you are hearing tonight anytime somebody having an issue having a problem having disappointment in life having failure in life having powerlessness and has gone from bad to worse the day the moment you begin to hear about jesus your solution is on the way and then she came in the press behind. You know what? There are people that hear, just like many of us are here tonight. And over there in the countries where you are, every continent we are connected together, you are hearing many people here, but they do not come. They hear, they vanish into the thin air there is no decision there is no action they hear they do not come 
but it's the people that hear and they follow up on what they heard and they come and they forsake those other people the local gurus that they have run after the philosophers they have run after the gang and the occultic powers they have run after they put them to the back and they come as you come today there will be no disappointment in your life she had heard of Jesus and came in the press behind press behind the press there is not talking of you know the press journalist is talking of the pressure of the crowd of the multitude some people are lost in the multitude in the press once they see a large crowd they forget why they came they look in at everything happening they become spectators but the woman said i have an issue and i'm going to resolve this issue and you tonight you are there you have an issue you are going to resolve this issue heaven is going to resolve your issue for you in jesus name and so crouch or no crouch press or no press pressure or no pressure as you come the lord will touch you and he touched his garment that's what he was looking for peter was there uh -uh, i'm not here for peter james john were there i'm not here for them i came for jesus how many of you came for Jesus tonight? Jesus the healer. Jesus the deliverer. And Jesus your savior, your redeemer. If you come for him and you concentrate on him, he'll touch you tonight. He will touch me tonight. And then in verse 28, look at verse 28. For she said, if I make touch, bought his clothes i shall be whole she said i am going with expectation i am going with faith i am going with confidence and she said the time of her miracle the moment i touch him i touch his clothes i if nobody else gets anything, I shall be whole. When you say that and you are confident, you will not miss your miracle. You say it in your heart. You mean it in your heart. You purpose it in your heart. You decide today is my day. Nothing, no barrier. Nothing, there's no demarcation nothing there is no wall of separation between me and my miracle tonight if that is your heart you are going to get it i shall be made whole and then look at verse 29 and straight away that same time straight away that same hour straight away that same moment the fountain of our blood was dried up every problem comes from a mount from a fountain every sickness comes from a fountain every deformity comes from a fountain the fountain is not seen the fountain is invisible what we see is what is coming out of the fountain blindness coming out of the fountain Paralysis coming out of a fountain, impotence coming out of a fountain, diabetes coming out of the fountain, the plague coming out of the fountain, the problem you have, the issue you have coming out of the fountain. And then the Lord goes to the fountain of your problem and then he touches you the fountain will dry up. 
when the fountain dries up, then blind eyes are open. The lame, they rise up and walk. And impossibilities become possible. And Christ is the one, the power of God that touches that fountain. And the fountain of all problems will vanish away. Praise the Lord. You are healed and delivered today in Jesus' name. And she felt in her body. You know, a fountain, I'm sure you've seen fountain of water before. Fountain of water gushing out, gushing out, gushing out. All around, you will see the effect. When that fountain dries up, you will see the effect. Everything around will dry up. And when the fountain of your problem dries up tonight, after the divine touch, look at that, look at that, look at that, I will see a miracle upon your life right there. And, and then it says, she was healed of that plague. Look at verse 34. In verse 34, it says, and he said unto her, daughter, look at that, she became a daughter, daughter of God. Today, you are son. Today, you are daughter. You come, you are invited into the family of God, and you will have a place in the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Thy faith has made thee whole. Thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace. Tonight, peace. Trouble, all gone. Confusion, all gone. Powerlessness, all gone. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. That's the story. The story is for you. I'm talking today on the healing virtue or in the divine touch. The healing virtue in the divine touch. Three things very quickly. Number one, the worsening condition without any helpful victory. The worsening condition, she went here, she went there, she went forth, she went backward, she went everywhere without any helpful victory. That was the beginning. Number two, the worthy confession with a hopeful voice. Worthy confession. If I just touch him and he touches me and virtue comes out of him, into my life today i will be made whole that's your confession today i said that's your confession today it will happen i see it coming on you already it will happen day number three is the wonderful cure through his healing virtue the wonderful cure wonder of all wonders that you will carry miracles back home tonight. Salvation, you take back home tonight. Healing, you take back home tonight. Deliverance, you take back home tonight. In Jesus' name, the wonderful cure through His healing. But let's come to number one. Number one is the condition of the woman. The condition where everybody finds himself before he gets to Christ. The worsening condition without any helpful victory. Look at verse 25. It says, And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years. Then in verse 26, it says, And had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better but rather grew worse that's the condition in which we find a lot of people check up your life everyone were born as babies 
and then we have all our parts of the body we're growing up and growing up by the time we're growing up we're depreciating we're becoming worse sometimes before we even become 40 eyesight is gone before we become 50 the legs are not functioning well again we're going from bad to worse like this a woman and then we begin to seek help here and help there and yet the condition is getting worse that means all around all i see is decay decay that you'll find in that song abide with me and then as you look at your life the heart getting weak eyesight getting dim joints not moving again the blood vessels are not running the kidney something is happening is decaying everybody getting worse and then uh, there's a peculiar disease that comes and that particular disease they give drugs they give injection they give a this and all the therapy and below and behold things are getting worse and you're spending money you're spending time you're spending your intelligence you're spending everything you've got and it appears the condition is getting worse it's like there is not only decay there's not only depreciation there's devaluation devaluation that people are not worth now what they what they were worth about 10 years ago it's like you know the beauty is going the strength is going the ability is going even the things we used to know forgetfulness is coming in we're going worse and worse and worse there is devaluation that's what happened to the woman it happens to us number one in the body it happens to us number two in our soul in our emotion we become so weak some people as they go from bad to worse they cry at every little thing depression comes to them and distress comes to them and because of those problems the emotional life is weakened to the point they are just broken down and they go from bad to worse to the body we're becoming worse in the soul we're becoming worse in our spirit the spirit also is getting to a worse and worse and worse condition the things we could stand against before we cannot stand against them anymore and the courage of spirit and the courage in your soul and the courage in your mind that was there before that courage is no more there now morally we're going down spiritually we're going down physically we're going down and then we try to seek help we seek help from advisors and from philosophers and from physicians and from everybody around and all the things they give us we try them so people even try pills before they can sleep they try pills and before they can do anything they have to try pills and all those pills will just weaken you and become dependent on all those pills and you say what am i going to do some people get worse to the point they even try to commit suicide but you will not die before your time the issue in your life will not drive you to that kind of depression devastation in your life in Jesus name now if you look at Isaiah chapter 1 verse 6 it tells us what happens to a nation what happens to an individual what happens to a family what happens to a tribe what happens to a community it says in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 6 it says from the soul of the foot even unto the head there is no soundness in it but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores and they have not been closed neither bound up neither mollified with ointment it just saying that the, the, the that's the situation of the man and that is that what everybody discovers in his own life and then we're told about the woman that even though there was no health 
and she had gone from physician to physician she spent all that she had she became penniless no health no dignity no life buoyant life powerful life because all the people that were supposed to help they brought her down they got all her money have you spent all your money everything you had looking for solution to the problem and yet everything is becoming worse but now you are hearing of jesus and then you come and the lord says why do you spend your money on we on that which is not bread why do you spend your money on that which will not give you solution all the people that have come before us and they tried that they went from bad to worse but the lord is going to pick up you up tonight and the, i said the lord will pick you up tonight from that dungeon where you are the dungeon of decay and the fountain of impotence in your life it will draw you up it will take you up and something new will happen in your life in jesus name i'm so happy for you because the divine touch is coming upon your life tonight and if you have been going down going down going down today is the day for the lord to touch you and pick you up and lift you up in jesus name look at second timothy chapter 3 verse 12 in second timothy chapter 3 verse 12 it says yea verse 13 verse 13 thank you we're looking at second timothy chapter 3 verse 13 but evil men and seducers evil men and seducers those who have not been to christ for the cleansing fountain of the blood evil men and seducers those who tempt other people oppress other people those who live in sin and those who have disobedience in their lives oppression in their lives and almost is everybody here when i say oppressors maybe you are thinking oh yes mr so and so is a great great oppre oppressor but you know what i found out anyone that has any power at all he does not use all the power profitably he wants to use the power over less privileged people to subdue them to suppress them to oppress them whatever power you have and whatever knowledge you have whatever ability you have if you don't have christ with that ability you don't have christ with those resources in your life you'll use it to oppress other people and evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse worse and worse deceiving and being deceived we've all been there we've all been there when people are sick instead of helping them the people that think uh -huh, now he's weak now she is weak and i'm going to use my health and my power and my ability to subdue him and to suppress him but today all suppression out of your life all oppression out of your life you're welcome to the lord say i welcome say it well i will come and the moment i come say it the moment i come salvation will come to me deliverance will come to me healing will come to me congratulations the lord will touch you tonight look at number two here point number two is the worthy confession with a hopeful voice a person that says no my life will not end like this the lord will confirm it in your life this issue will not take my life the lord will confirm it in your life this fountain that is oozing out and oozing out will not end my life amen
there is hope for you. I said there is hope for you. But that hope must come out in your voice. Look at Mark chapter 5, verse 27. It says, When she had heard of Jesus, look at that, she heard of Jesus too, came in the press behind. Three, touched its garment. Verse 28, for she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. Now, if you look at that verse 27, number one, she heard, she paid attention. You know some people, you tell them about Jesus, Savior, he died for you, he rose again, he will forgive your sin, there's no other name whereby you can be saved except the name of Jesus because he is the way, he is the truth, he is the life. And when you know him, when you get connected with him, he shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And if the son shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Tonight is the night of your freedom. Some people here, they don't pay attention. And so they don't know what they're going to do to be able to connect with that divine touch and with that saving touch and with that sanctifying touch and without, with that strengthening touch and with that healing touch. They hear they don't understand. And the Bible says when someone hears the word of the kingdom and he does not understand it, then that wicked one cometh and taketh from his heart that thing which he had. But this woman said, I heard Satan will not take it away from me. I heard activities will not take it away from me i heard people around and their actions will not take it away from me i heard i'm going to keep what i've heard i'm going to act on what i heard and so number one she heard and if you are going to receive help thank god your help is near the number one thing is that you hear you hear that jesus is savior your savior you hear that jesus is healer your healer you hear that jesus is deliverer he will break every chain every shackle in your life in jesus name i remember some years ago we were in onicha in the southeast here and then this man was having insanity, totally, totally mad. Change in the heart and padlock because he was wild, violent like an animal. And then we, we spoke about Jesus, Jesus, our deliverer. And he heard, even though he had mental problem, he heard. And then when we prayed, I said, when I pray in the name of Jesus, the hand of the Lord will touch you. All your problems will be taken away. And he believed, even though it was a mental problem. And then we prayed and said, in Jesus' name, you are delivered. And Onicha people, Onicha people know to say amen. Just like Enugu people. Praise the Lord. And when they said, Amen, the man came to his senses. All the things that bound him in the heart, everything was taken away. And he came and said, Why did they put this on my hand? And then the chains were removed, the padlock was removed, and he came to give testimony. And that man almost became a preacher. He said, I am delivered. And I put it to your mouth tonight. You are delivered. Say, I am delivered. This woman heard, he heard that Jesus is Savior. He heard that Jesus is healer. He heard that Jesus is deliverer. And came. And came. 
It's not everybody that has heard that gets saved, only the people that hear and they come. It's not everybody that has heard that gets healed, only the people that hear and they come. And as you come tonight, you act on the word you have heard and the healing virtue of the Lord will flow into your body. And the saving virtue of the Lord will flow into your body. And the sanctifying virtue in Christ as you touch him will flow into your spirit. And the strengthening virtue, that virtue of Christ gives us strength, gives us salvation, gives us sanctification, holiness without which no man shall save the Lord, and gives us strength, power in the Holy Ghost. And tonight, power will come to your life in Jesus' name. She came in the press. That's the crowd. There are people that forget their request, forget why they came. They become a spectator as they see the crowd. But this woman said, I've carried this issue for 12 years. And I'm not going to allow any press, any pressure, any crowd, any multitude to hinder me. I see Jesus there. I'm getting to him. I'm not even going to say I want to shake hands with him. All I want to do is touch the hem of his garment and the moment I touch the hem of his garment I shall be made whole from 12 years problem whatever the number of years your problem upstage whatever the number of years you've been carrying what you are carrying did you hear that testimony of uh, that our young sister that had fibroid four pieces like balls and she came yesterday and she paid attention like you are paying attention and the Lord touched her yesterday and then she got back home lo and behold everything came out once the fountain is touched everything every pollution every plague every disease every infirmity from that fountain will come out of your body and then she said if i only touch i only touch his clothes i shall be made whole look at verse 29 in verse 29 it says and straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up. Cancer dried up. Diabetes dried up. The works of Satan dried up. The power of evil dried up. Your tears dried up. A miracle touch is coming your way. And then, look at this, she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. She felt in her body. Let me tell you this. Sometimes, the feeling in your body after you hear the name of Jesus can be so small. Like when Elijah prayed, and then he sent his servant out. He had prayed for rain. Not only rain in a village, in a town, in a community, in the whole nation of Israel. And the rain of blessing, of miracle, is going to fall tonight. At Tenugo here, it will fall for everyone. In the whole of the nation, Nigeria, in every city, every town, the rain of miracles will fall in Jesus' name. 
in all the countries of Africa and in all in all the cities everywhere America Asia those who are online you are in your home there pay attention you hear you come and then you voice it out and you confess when I touch him he touches me all the fountain of my problems everything will dry up give me a good amen like a little cloud Elijah said to his servant go and see check up and he came back I see nothing some people they end the meeting at that point but Elijah said go and check up again he came back and said I see nothing some people they say I don't want to miss the bus. I don't want to miss the car. I'm going now. Wait, check up. You will see the miracle there. The third time he went and came back and I see nothing. Elijah said, you must see not something. What kind of eyes do you have? Eyes of unbelief, eyes of discouragement, eyes of tradition eyes of habit or the eyes of faith go back and see and then at the seventh time he said i see somebody there i see somebody there i see somebody there i see a small cloud like a man's hand what i'm saying is when you check up it might be a little feeling it's not big, it's not enormous, a little feeling she felt in her body. That little feeling is the forerunner of a mighty reign of miracle in your life. And so you will act on that. If you have a little urge to stand up, you stand up. If you have a little urge to open your eyes and see, you open your eyes, miracle sight will be given unto you. A little urge to look at the place where the swelling was, touch it, it's still hard touch it again he said I touch it again that thing must go out of that place she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague look at Vastachi it says in Vastachi and Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him virtue had gone out of him all the time even when jesus was not praying virtue coming out of him even when he appeared just walking and is not taking note of anyone virtue coming out of him you know what jesus is now by the right hand of the heavenly father and he's sitting there and he knows about this divine touch for total freedom. His attention is now on you. And virtue is going to come out of him on your life in Jesus' name. Once there's somebody that has an issue and has a faith, and is going to touch and is having expectation once there's somebody here there anywhere wanting to touch him now the lord is paying attention to you and that divine touch is going to come upon your life virtue is gone out of him and it turns him about in the press and said who touched my clothes he knew is jesus is the son of god he knows all things but he wanted the woman to come out give testimony and say i am and tonight i say i am 
who touch his clothes. I am the one. I said, I am the one who has got the healing virtue tonight. I am. Who has got the saving touch tonight? I am. Who is getting the miracle tonight? I am. Who touch my clothes? Look at verse 31. And then it says in verse 31, And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and thou seest who touched me. And then in verse 32, it says, And he looked around about to see her. He will see you. He looked around about him to see her that had done this thing. And then in verse 33, and the woman fearing and trembling. Uh -uh. Why was she afraid? Because a woman having an issue of blood was unclean in Israel. And she wasn't to touch any utensil, any couch, any chair, any bed, anything, anybody. And she of all people, should not touch the high priest, should not touch a priest. She was unclean. And Jesus Christ, the high priest, come from heaven. And now Jesus turned around and said, Who touched me? And the woman was afraid. I have done what I should not have done. No, woman, don't be afraid and don't tremble. When the unclean, touches Christ all the uncleanness will vanish away when the defiled touches Jesus all the defilement will vanish away when a terrible sinner a rejected sinner when he touches the Lord the Savior all the sin will vanish away and when you touch the Lord he doesn't catch your uncleanness your catch is hell. Your catch is power. Your catch is virtue. And then all those unclean things in your life, touching Jesus, that's all. Everything will vanish away. And then she stood and told him all the truth. Public confession public testimony you have a testimony i have a testimony he will forgive your sin he will save your soul it will change your life and the fountain of sin the fountain of defilement in your life will be dried up tonight in jesus name i believe i believe be it unto you according to your faith look at point number three now point number three the wonderful kill through his healing virtue. Wonderful kill, wonderful conversion, wonderful cleansing, wonderful healing, wonderful deliverance as the healing, saving touch of the Lord comes upon you today. Let me have a good amen. Look at verse 34. Verse 34, it tells us, and he said unto her, He will talk to you tonight. The smile of heaven is coming upon your life. The glory, the goodness of heaven is coming upon your life. And that weakness in your body will vanish away. And that sickness in your body will vanish away. And the sin, the captivating sin that holds you captive, all that will be taken away tonight in Jesus' name. And he said unto her, daughter, and he says unto you, son, 
you know how to become a son of God, a daughter of God, come out from among them and be ye clean and touch not the unclean thing. And I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Tonight, as you come out of the crowd, I don't mean this crowd, out of the crowd of sinners, out of the crowd of your gang, out of the crowd of idol worshippers, out of the crowd of evil doers, and you come tonight and you touch the Lord, his salvation will come to you. As many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons and the daughters of God, even those that believe on his name. As you believe on his name tonight, you'll become a daughter. I didn't hear the daughter's name. You become a son in Jesus' name. Now, are we the sons of God? And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when we shall see him, we'll be like him. He doesn't have cancer, you'll not have cancer. He doesn't have brain problem, you'll not have brain problem. He doesn't have infirmity, you'll not have infirmity. We will be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Thy faith has made thee whole. Oh, somebody says, hey, Pastor, I wish I had faith. Of course you have faith. Thy faith. Thy faith. You know the problem? Sometimes the faith is like a grain of mustard seed. As when a grain of sand is in your pocket. You are not feeling it. It's not weighty. A grain of rice is in your pocket. You will not feel it. The grain of mustard seed faith is in your heart right now. Because you know, God is no respecter of persons. If he did it for her, he will do it for me. He will do it for me. He will dry the fountain. He will save your soul. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be healed. That faith will set you free tonight. Thy faith has made thee whole. You are not incomplete anymore. The faith has made thee whole. Impotence will vanish out of your life. Whole. Complete. No lack. No limitation. You are made whole tonight in Jesus' name. That thing boiling in your head will cool down. And all those things walking about in your body, everything will vanish away. Thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace. When the Prince of Peace tells you, go in peace, your sins are forgiven, go in peace. The power that held you captive before is broken and shattered. Go in peace. There is peace in your heart. The peace of salvation. The peace of forgiveness. And the peace of redemption. Go in peace. And as you go, the whole of thy plague. No more plague. No more sickness. No more powerlessness. No more pennilessness. No more injury in your life. 
she heard she came in the press she said if i only touch the hem of his garment i shall be made whole she got what she confessed you'll get what you what you confess somebody there salvation is coming to you where are you i said where are you salvation coming to you healing coming to you freedom coming to you the peace of god will settle in your heart right now it's bowed and eyes closed it's bowed and eyes closed your moment has now come your time of salvation has now come your time of redemption has now come he will touch you and the healing virtue will flow into your life the saving virtue will flow into your life you come and you want all the defilement of sin taken away from your life all the guilt condemnation of sin taken away from your life you want the fear of judgment for your sin taken away from your life you want to experience the forgiveness of god the salvation of god and the peace that comes with salvation wherever you are raise up that hand remember the woman heard you've heard now you must come 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 he she came and then the saving virtue of the lord that brings peace walked in her life anywhere you are in any congregation in any country in your own house you're online you're online and you want that salvation of the lord now just raise up your hand where you are leave every other sin now concentrate on this the saving touch of the lord is coming upon your life you're raising up your hand wherever you are over here over there please stand up this is your time please stand up stand up stand up she took a step she acted out her faith she said i will touch him i will touch him you're indicating by standing up i want all my sins forgiven if you are not sure of heaven you must stand up you might be a church goer and you might be a bible reader and you might be a singer a hymn singer you might be a person paying tithes and offering in the church but you do not have assurance that if you dropped dead now you'll get to heaven the divine touch of the lord will come upon you and forgive your sin and save your soul that's why you've heard now you have to come and you indicate your calm by just standing upright there then uh, tell the Lord, O oh Lord, tell him, tell him, O oh Lord, I believe and I accept you are my Lord and my Savior. By my faith, by my confession, I touch you now. Let your saving virtue flow into my life. Forgive me grant me peace in my heart in my spirit grant me the strengthening virtue to go and sin no more and now begin to live in newness of life tell him believe that small grain of faith that you have say yes Lord I believe by my will i've surrendered myself to you and you said whosoever comes to you you will in no wise cast off you have accepted me thank you lord i have 
the peace I have the forgiveness I have the salvation thank you Lord it's done I pray for you now father in Jesus name I pray for every